Welcome to the 2020 Advertising Hall of Achievement Induction Ceremony. I'm Steve Pacheco, President and CEO of the American Advertising Federation, and I'm truly happy to be here and welcome you, along with our board chair, Lynn Lewis, the U.S. CEO of UM Worldwide. Thank you, Steve. Welcome, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in. One of the highlights of our year is actually recognizing the top young talent at the Advertising Hall of Achievement induction ceremonies. It shows the industry the impact and the innovation our distinguished honorees all possess. During this global pandemic, the advertising community has been tried and tested, but we've persevered by utilizing the versatility, the creativity, and the tenacity that are fundamental to what we do and who we are. And now more than ever, we're witnessing the power of humanity and the power of advertising to unite us under the most unexpected circumstances. The AAF is honored to serve as the unifying voice for advertising and to represent a community that is so fiercely committed to making a positive difference. So I'd like to offer a tremendous thank you to our sponsors, our volunteer committee members, and all eight of our honorees. And of course, all of you tuning in at home who've continued to support the AAF and our virtual advertising hall of achievement. Each of our honorees have uniquely demonstrated skills that transcend these time-honored traits with proven results. The Advertising Hall of Achievement is just one of our many pride and joys at the AAF, and because of that, it's a very special occasion. I know you're gonna be inspired, encouraged, and challenged in the most powerful way. Thank you, Steve, and very well said. I think it's important to double down on Steve's sentiments about the power of advertising and the AAF as an organization to unite our community and how especially meaningful that is in this truly unprecedented year. I look forward to the Advertising Hall of Achievement ceremony every single year. It is thanks to this event in particular that I have formed deep lasting friendships with some incredible people. I've shared the most special parts of our industry with my own family and continue to have the opportunity to honor all of those that are not only committed to their craft and their companies, but have truly sought to make a lasting impact on our industry's ecosystem and the broader communities around us. Okay, like nearly everything that was planned for 2020, this year's ceremony looks very different. I will admit, that I'm wearing slightly more comfortable shoes than I typically would for this event. But this ceremony doesn't feel any different because nothing can take away from the accomplishments and milestones we are recognizing and the impact the eight individuals have made on our industry. When you hear and see the stories of each honoree, you will be inspired, humbled, and motivated there is nothing that could take those sentiments away from this event. So again, while we weren't able to hold the ceremony in person like we have in the past, the good news is that this year we weren't limited by location or size of the event space and we're able to open up this event far and wide. This means that we have the biggest audience ever to help welcome the Advertising Hall of Achievement class of 2020. So to all of you that are joining your very first Hall of Achievement ceremony, we are thrilled to have you and we welcome you. The important work that the AAF leads is dedicated wholly to the service of our industry, to bring us together, to support the community, and to evolve and improve in the areas in which we are challenged. As chair of the board, I'm honored to be able to help drive these actions forward in partnership with our vice chair, Tiffany R. Warren, and our board of such distinguished industry leaders, many of whom are also alumni of the Hall of Achievement. Thank you all on behalf of myself, Tiffany, and the board of directors, a sincere congratulations to all of the honorees being inducted today. Thanks, Lynn. We'll now hear from our co-chairs for this event, Lizette Williams and Brian Monahan. All right, well, thank you, Stephen Lynn, and welcome everyone joining us. I'm here with Lizette Williams to welcome you to this year's Advertising Hall of Achievement Awards. Thank you, Brian. I am thrilled to join you for this amazing event. All right, well, this is gonna be fun. 
The Advertising Hall of Achievement Awards ceremony is truly the cornerstone of industry recognition. As an alum and co-chair of these ceremonies, I am so incredibly honored to distinguish these eight individuals who not only have achieved so much as advertising professionals, but have also made a point to be a positive impact in their communities. The AAF Hall of Achievement recognizes and acknowledges the rich diversity and range of experiences, backgrounds, and cultures. And our class this year is a strong representation of all those things and more. Whether you're familiar with the 2020 class of Hall of Achievers or not, believe me when I tell you that it includes people you should be proud of not only for their contributions to advance the AAF's mission of protecting and promoting the profession of advertising, but also by being good citizens of the world and making their communities a better place. It is a breath of fresh air to be able to step back and celebrate a group of people who represent hope, progress, and innovation, and who demonstrate the power and positivity in advertising, and more importantly, in who they are. Amazing. Now, there were months of deliberations and voting by our esteemed Council of Judges, made up of industry notables who volunteered their time to thoroughly review submitted materials and participate in virtual pitches to select the final eight for membership into the hall. The Council of Judges represents all facets of the advertising industry, and we take the vetting process very seriously. It is no easy task to whittle down the nominated pool of talent who are eagerly awaiting induction into the hall. AAF Hall of Achievers are the individuals who make our industry the dynamic and exciting business that it is. As Brian mentioned, this distinction represents more than their extraordinary professional achievements. One of the most important attributes that we seek in a Hall of Achievement inductee is an unwavering commitment to public service. One of our honorees will receive the additional distinction of the Jack Averett Volunteer Spirit Award. Jack Averett was a volunteer extraordinaire, inspiring fellow industry professionals to do the same, myself included. Receiving this recognition when I was inducted as part of the 2017 Hall of Achievement class. Words cannot properly express how meaningful that was for me and I will always cherish it as a top career and professional milestone. All right, thank you, Lizette. All right, well, let's do this. Tonight's program includes our traditional introduction of the honorees and their personal reaction from receiving this award. But we also have some great creative content and special messaging from our event sponsors, so you don't wanna miss a minute. And now, without further ado, we are proud to present to you our Advertising Hall of Achievement induction ceremony. Today, we're celebrating eight challengers from the world of marketing. Challengers who are like this girl taking on this enormous grizzly bear. You are the Davids who brought down Goliath, the underdogs who took on the big, hairy, topless bad guy. You've inspired, encouraged, challenged how we go about our business. Yeah! Bears don't frighten you much either. Congratulations from one challenger to eight others. It brings me great pleasure to introduce to you today American Advertising Federation Hall of Achievement recipient, Carla Davis. I have known Carla Davis for what seems like an eternity. We met in 2007 when we were both junior marketers at PepsiCo. And Carla has been a coworker, a colleague, a friend, a sister, a prayer partner ever since that day in 2007. But more than anything, Carla is an amazing human being. She is active in her church um, where she serves as the first lady and has been just a light to everyone that she comes in contact with. Um, Carla is my sister. She is a joy um, to, to just bring her energy and her light into the world and into our industry. Um, I'm also thrilled 
to present her with the Jack Averett Volunteer Spirit Award. Um, it's a special honor because it goes to one of the members of the class who has really exceeded and shown tremendous, tremendous contributions to community service and to really contributing to the community as a whole um, in a tremendous way. And that is exactly what Carla has done. She continues to lead um, both at her organization and outside on several, several endeavors. More than anything, what I wanna stress to you is that Carla is just a wonderful person, a dear friend, an advocate for, for women and for diversity and someone who is truly just getting started. Carla, it's been amazing to, to see your growth and to be your sister and your friend and your prayer partner as we've navigated all the tumultuous seasons and the amazing seasons of our career. And I cannot be more thrilled to welcome you into the 2020 class of the Advertising Hall of Achievement. Carla Davis. I am the wife to Demetrius Davis, who is the founding senior pastor at City Point Community Church. I am mama to Layla Bear, a four-year-old going on 40. And most recently and currently, I am the senior director of marketing at Ulta Beauty. So my journey to Ulta Beauty really started with my journey to understanding marketing and beauty overall. Uh, I had the bug for whatever was this marketing and advertising space pretty early on, and it has taken me to some pretty amazing places. Carla deserves this so much. I've worked with Carla for many years and continue to see her grow as a leader who is confident, cool, charismatic, and caring. Carla, your impact on our company, our business, and beyond has continued to be awesome, and you're such a shining star. Congratulations. Hi, everyone. My name is Julie Wilson, and I'm the beauty director over at Cosmopolitan, and I'm super honored to be sharing a few words about the amazing Carla Davis, because as you know, she's super talented, hardworking, a razor-sharp visionary, and someone who is a truly transformative figure within the beauty industry. When I think of Carla Davis, I think of someone who gives without hesitation. She gives to her community, she gives to her family, and I'm here to confirm she gives to the people who work for her. So outside of my day job, I also find it incredibly inspiring and motivating and so much of my, my passion of empowering others in different ways as well. That has shown up in our church that we founded over 12 years ago, as well as in a platform that we started uh, called Young and Debtless. And this really was about um, eliminating debt, eliminating a, a hardship in the financial space in order to feel more freedom overall in your lives. Carla brings incredible energy and magnetism to every single space that she occupies, whether we're talking about our home, the church, or our business. Carla brings this energy that is simply magnetic. I am so impressed and have been since the day that I've met her um, by her professionalism and just her, just her incredible abilities that she brings to the table. Being a black woman in, in beauty is an amazing opportunity because it gives me a chance to have a voice at tables where often a voice like mine is not heard. And so those are those places where I am most excited to be able to lend a voice, lend a perspective, create empathy in a way that most people might not have had an opportunity to, to build so that they can see it from a different perspective, see it through the conversation and the eyes of an other. My continual question is, what barriers need to still be broken down for others, um, for communities, for businesses, for people that don't have a voice in this space? And my opportunities to do that have continued to, to build. And those are the things that just remind me that the work is good, the work is worth it. Um, even when it's frustrating, even when it doesn't always feel like it's going my way, it's knowing those places when I have been able to make a difference that give me the drive to keep pushing to make more difference.
Good afternoon. While there's so much to say and so many to think, I only have two minutes, so I'll move it along. For 20 years now, I have been blessed to work in an industry that can shape and cement the narrative of people, cultures, and societies. There's such a beauty to that, and also a responsibility I do not take lightly. So in this moment of appreciation and reflection, I use this platform to implore all those that are listening to continue doing the work of diversifying the entire ecosystem of our industry. From the boards, to the brand teams, to behind the cameras, to the creative teams that build the ideas. As a Black woman in this space, it's hard to tell you what it's like to navigate a world that often leaves me feeling isolated and constantly second-guessing my place in it. And if that's my story, as a Hall of Achievement inductee, you can only imagine the plight and predicament of those with less support and visibility. So as amazing strides are being made to take unprecedented stances on social and racial inequities in the marketplace, I challenge us all to take to the inequities within our own walls with the same vigor. The stories we tell and the pictures we paint will only get more relevant and more powerful as we expand the circle of influence and life experiences considered valuable at the table. The time has passed for bringing folding chairs. So lest I keep you too long, there are several people that I would be remiss if I didn't take the time to thank and acknowledge in this moment. The AAF and Review Board of Peers. To know that the selection committee consists of a panel of Hall of Achievement inductees is both a bit surreal and incredibly humbling. I thank you for your confidence in me and the amazing community I am so honored to join. I'm particularly grateful for the additional distinction of Jack Everett Spirit Award winner, as my passion for paying it forward continues to fuel me every day. To my amazing Alta Beauty team and overall industry community, I hear your cheers and so appreciate how you push me and inspire me to be better. To Gilbert Davila, Lizette Arswaga, and Lizette Williams, thank you for believing in me enough to throw my hat in the ring. Your support continues to humble me, and I am blessed to call you all friends. To my dearest mama, my late wonderful father, and my ride or die family, your love, strength, and perseverance have taught me resilience, excellence, and a powerful sense of self. To my husband Demetrius and baby girl Layla Bear, I love you both so much, and I hope I make you proud. I hustle hard for all of us. And ultimately, may God get the glory for this wonderful honor, as I pray I am a reflection of his light and love. God bless, and thank you all. Congrats, Carla. We're proud. Congrats, Carla. We're proud of you, Carla. Congrats, Carla. Woohoo! We are proud. Congrats, Carla. We're super proud of you, Carla. Congrats, Carla. We're proud of you. Congrats, Carla. Hey, everybody. This is Gary Vaynerchuk, the CEO of VaynerMedia. Uh, as you can see by these beautiful faces, uh, there is nothing more 2020 than a Zoom call congratulating the incredible, deserving, uh, inductees to the AAF uh, Hall of Achievement. We wanted to take a quick uh, couple of seconds to congratulate you. We know that all of you have worked feverishly, smart, thoughtfully uh, to get to this point, and we're humbled to be able to take a couple seconds and congratulate you. Uh, Halvo, we love you. Let's continue with the show, team. Let's clap it up 2020 Zoom style. My name's Jonathan Halverson, VP of Consumer Experience at Mondelez International and a member of the 2019 AAF Hall of Achievement class. Today I have the great honor of introducing Marcus Collins and helping this community induct him into the AAF Hall of Achievement. Marcus, like many of the members of this class, stand out for their both professional contributions as well as what they've done to better the industry. But I must say, personally, I have great envy over a lot of the work that Marcus does and am a super fan. The iconic work he's done to create cultural moments for brands is second to none. Budweiser, Made in America, a new tour, a new event that ultimately has redefined the music landscape. His work with the Brooklyn Nets, 
not really advertising, just talking about a franchise, but truly creating an entire icon in my now hometown of Brooklyn, New York. And then of course, there's the beloved work that he's done for State Farm. His campaigns with Chris Paul brought new modern take to a brand that had become a little distant and dusty. But it isn't just great work. A lot of people have great work. But what really makes Marcus Collins stand out is his contributions to the advertising industry. The AAF, what makes the AAF special and different is its commitment to train the next generation of professionals. And there is no one who better exemplifies this than Marcus Collins. Marcus Collins, in addition to working his day job at Donor, is also a world leading professor at the University of Michigan Roth School of Business. The classes he teach in digital advertising and marketing at both the undergraduate and graduate level provide the essential skills and tools for the next generation of advertising professionals to walk in his footsteps. He has been recognized by the students for his excellence in teaching, the larger community of faculty for being a great colleague, and now today, the larger advertising community by saying, Marcus, you belong. You are one of the greats. You are in the Hall of Achievement. Ladies and gentlemen, Marcus Collins. He's been called a translator of culture. He is an award-winning faculty member at the Ross School of Business at the University of Michigan. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Marcus Collins. I'm Marcus, and I'm super excited to be with you guys uh, today. So thanks so much for having me. In the 30 years that I've been in advertising, no one has affected my life personally and professionally the way that Marcus Collins has. One word that best describes Marcus is excellence. Brilliant. Passionate. Encouraging. Inspiring. 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 Dope. He said dope all the time when we worked together, and I think that's probably the best way to describe working with him as well. It was definitely dope. It doesn't really matter the size of the room. People are just so captivated and clinging on to every single word that he's saying. Social is about people. We have to put people first. They think about technologies that accelerate the behaviors that we want people to adopt. Marcus is so consistent, and that's why his brand is so brolic. Don't drink this, drink that. Don't go here, go there. Don't vote for him, vote for me. Don't go to his party, go to my party. Everything we do as marketers is in the sole purpose of getting people to move. He's a guy who will, in service of his point, pull on music theory, a Daniel Kahneman footnote, and usually a Prime Call Quest lyric. Marcus Collins. I just Googled him and I got really depressed about my own career. He's from the coolest city ever, Detroit, and he's a really rare breed in advertising because he's an advertiser, but he's an academic. So I spend my job a lot of ways translating culture for brands, then translating brands for culture. And I've been fortunate enough to do that with a lot of brands across a wide spectrum of industries. Marcus has worked in, you know, the music industry, just a, a great background in all things kind of digital, social, um, as well as, you know, teaching and, and giving back. The fact that he chooses to stay at the Ross School and focus on the future of advertising says a lot about his integrity, and those kids absolutely adore him. Marcus knows how to connect with students. Marcus's class was by far the best class I ever took at Ross. He lives his values, so his authenticity is what sells his vision for ideal marketing. This makes his lectures great. He's the most engaging speaker that you'll get to hear, as well as being so down to earth and easy to learn from. Ultimately, I just want to put dope things in the world that make a dent in culture. So that when my daughters come of age, they can look and say, yo, my dad did that thing. People say, yo, you got the coolest dad ever. And prayerfully, they'll be able to say, yeah, we do. Thank you so much. I'm not supposed to be here. See, I didn't start my career in advertising and marketing. I sort of stumbled into this profession. And the majority of my career in this industry, I've sort of felt like I didn't belong, like a bit of a transplant. But after some time, I decided to shift my focus from my own lament and started focusing on that of others. See, instead of thinking about not being seen, which I felt at the time, 
I started focused on making sure my team was heard. Or said differently, I decided to serve. Which makes sense, right? Like we are in a service-based industry. You would think that we'd all do that, right? If you're on the client side, you serve your customers. If you're on the agency side like myself, you serve your clients. Like we are in the business of service. It is what we do. But once I decided to purposefully, intentionally serve, things started to change. The tides began to shift. It reminds me of a Martin Luther King quote. And he says, if you want to be recognized, if you want to be great, be a servant. Because everyone can serve. We can all serve. You don't have to be the creative director or head of strategy to serve. We can all do it. In fact, we probably all should do it. If for no other reason than the fact that someone decided to do it for us. We're not here because of our own greatness, because of our own merit. We are in the position that we're in because someone decided to serve. We are the beneficiary of someone else's service. And I think the Lord God of Israel, he gave me a heart and a mind to do that, as well as the capabilities, the capacities to do it as well. I think the AAF for this unbelievable award that a part of me still feels like, I don't know if I even deserve it, still feels quite surreal, but I'm super grateful for it. I'm thankful for the handful of people who decided to take a chance on me when my resume didn't really reflect my potential early in my career. I'm thinking about Matt Fisher, Ed Swajnajar, Matthew Knowles, Avi Savar, Steve Stout, Laura Sawyer, Melanie Burnett Weaver. These people gave me an opportunity to serve at an unbelievable level. And for that, I will always be grateful. I'm thankful for my teammates, both past and present, across the years, those who worked with me and those who worked for me, my clients, even my students, because they trusted me to serve. I'm thankful for my mentors and my collaborators, John Bond, John Branch, Jeff DeGraff, Susan Mudambi, right? Your service to me has been invaluable. And I hope that one day I'll be able to do for others what you have done for me. And to my parents, my brothers, my cousins, my natural family, and my spiritual family. I am unbelievably thankful because of you and the way you serve, I learned how to serve. And to my wife and our beautiful daughters, Georgia and Ivy, I can't say thank you enough for your love and undying support and encouragement. You all are the fuel that propels me. And my service starts with you. And lastly, to my fellow 2020 inductees, it's an honor to be counted among you. And I am especially thankful for you because what you do because of your service, I now finally feel like I belong because of you. I feel like I found my people. And for that, I'll never be able to say thank you enough. In these tough times, the need for creativity to live with the changes is more than ever important. And I think that this year's leaders, as you, have shown enough passion to live with this change, to make a greater change, and to earn your place where you are today. Congratulations to the 2020 inductees. Your many achievements inspire us all. And we're truly proud to see our very own Lauren Cramsey as part of the 2020 Hall of Achievement class. Congratulations and cheers. David Ogilvy famously said, talent, I believe, is most likely to be found among nonconformists, dissenters, and rebels. Since joining Ogilvy in 2004, Lauren Cramsey embodied that definition of talent. She's been a change agent who has done things of consequence at every step of her 15 year career at Ogilvy, defying expectations every step of the way. There are leaders that make decisions to win the day, and there are those who foresee the future and act to bring it about. You can always expect Lauren Cramsey to choose action over incremental change. In every role she's had, Lauren has pushed for bold change, benefiting the agency's business and helping to forward transformative partnerships, partnerships with clients, as well as within the agency, WPP, and the industry at large. Lauren's respect for advertising's past and her skill in interpreting what it takes to build brands today 
or what makes her an indispensable leader and ambassador of the industry. As the Chief People Officer at WPP, I have been incredibly impressed by her appreciation and advocacy for the people she works with. As we have grappled with big issues this year, from changes to the way we work and live due to COVID, to how we use our platform as a company to combat racism, Lauren has been an advocate for our people. As she rose through the ranks of Ogilvy, from being the youngest person to lead business development, to her time as global CMO, to now leading Ogilvy's New York office, she has used her influence and resources to unlock doors, to provide opportunities to those who may not have otherwise had influence and power. It is my honor to present this award to Lauren. Congratulations. I met Lauren Cramsey as a board member four years ago when I started this team, and it has been a roller coaster ever since. <laughs> I have known uh, Lauren Cramsey, I think, for probably 15 years, which means she was probably 15 when we met. Lauren embodies the David Ogilvy divine discontent. As good as it is, it can always be better. She doesn't stop there. She'll go, and I have an idea. I mean, it was almost like she was allergic to bullshit. And so I knew that I had found a kindred spirit because I literally was like, I think she's my ivory to my ebony. <laughs> we need people like Lauren out there who are unabashedly saying the things that need to be said, even if sometimes they're really hard to hear. Lauren has always championed provocative voices, diverse thinkers, creativity. And I think she is especially helpful for uh, pushing gender equality in our industry and diversity in broader forms. She recognizes if we don't create a more diverse agency industry ecosystem, we will not progress. Now more than ever, people have to extend a hand, have a conversation and talk about the things that are uncomfortable. And Lauren is always willing to do that. She admitted she doesn't know it all. And I appreciated that vulnerability. Combine fearlessness with great imagination and creativity and couple that with energy and you get a force of nature. And that's what Lauren is. She is a force of nature, a force for good, a personality that is just one of a kind. A firecracker with a kind heart. Those that have the opportunity to work around her, for her, with her, um, are truly better for being around her. So Lauren is, yeah, she's a once in a lifetime friend. She's um, savvy. She's sophisticated, she's quick. I think most of all, she cares. Lauren uh, came to speak at one of the forays events during advertising week one year. Lauren was very pregnant with her first child. She came in looking absolutely elegant in the maternity clothes that she had on, all put together, ready to go on the stage. And just as she's ready to head up to the stage, she leans over and whispers in my ear, can we get this thing over with? I have to pee. <laughs> Here, here's this lovely, elegant woman speaking out of the side of her mouth about having to pee. To me, that sums Lauren up in a nutshell. I would think we would need to put some extra sauce on that and say badass and troublemaker. Nothing surprises me about Lauren Cramsey because she's so true to who she is. You know you're going to get full Lauren, and that's the awesome thing. Go Lauren. It says it all on my t-shirt. I am so proud and happy for you. Enjoy this moment. I can't think of anybody who deserves this recognition more than you do. Really, really, really enjoy it. Give yourself the moment to take credit and to absorb all that you are accomplishing and how adored and loved and admired you are. Keep pushing. Keep being a change agent. Keep being you and you will make all of us better. I'm so proud because I feel like I knew you when, you know, and here you are as, as the leader you should be. Uh, so congratulations. Enjoy your virtual gala. I love you. Thank you, Jackie. And first and foremost, Thank you to Steve, Lisa, Lynn, and the entire AAF who made this the most fulfilling experience it could be under the circumstances and who made it incredibly, incredibly, incredibly hard to get here today. Uh, as a first time reject, uh, I know how much uh, it takes to get to this moment. And because I'm now officially past the age deadline, uh, I can say um, with great security that I'm so proud of the people that I stand with in this class. 
Marcus, Carla, Jared, Caval, Adrian, Brandon, Haley, it has been an honor and a privilege to be inducted with you. And I know each of you will bring something special to my life as we now embark on our new journey to get into the AAF Hall of Fame in about 20 years, give or take. Achievement is never something that you find on your own, nor is it something that you celebrate on your own. So I want to thank everyone who's here tonight uh, to celebrate with me virtually. I want to thank John Halverson, who is quite literally a one-of-a-kind client, a once-in-a-lifetime client, and an incredible friend. Um, my husband, Jason, my kids, Drake and Scarlett, you are my greatest achievement. Mom, thank you for not being here in New York to tell me that you hate my red lipstick. I love you. Thank you for all your support. Uh, and finally, to every sister in this business who stood in front of me when I was in danger, who stood beside me when I needed support and who pushed me forward when I needed to be pushed, Shelly. Wendy, Colleen, Kristen, Laura, Nancy, Dylan, Janae, Tiff, Donna, Lynn, Lindsay, Judy, Monique, Carla, Karina, Charlie, Sakima, Anika, Alyssa, Megan, Marie Claire, Nadja, Beth Ann, Charlotte, Ashlyn, Simone, Kate, Kathy, Rachel, Annette, Sophie, and Emily. Ladies, we're not done yet. And finally, to my dad, who is not here with us anymore, but who I know guides me from above. And I know no resilience without you, Dad. This is a surreal time, but this award reminds me that surreal is irrelevant if you have real. And real is the respect we have for each other, the love we have for each other, and the celebrating we're about to do for each other. Thank you. Good night. Are you ready? Hey. Bring what you got. Bring what you got. Are you ready? Over the course of my, and I, I sheepishly admit this, 25 plus year marketing career, working across a number of iconic global brands and with world-class teams, there are only a handful of leaders who stand out as truly exceptional marketers, and even fewer who are also guided by a bigger sense of purpose that transcends their role. Adrian Parker is one such individual, and that's why I'm delighted to recognize his well-deserved induction into the prestigious Hall of Achievement. I first met Adrian 20 years ago when he was fresh out of college. And if you're keeping score, that means Adrian is still a very young man, even more impressive given all that he has achieved in his career, and certainly today's tremendous honor as well. Over the ensuing two decades, Adrian was a member of my marketing team at three different companies, less a testament to my leadership and more to his enduring loyalty and my tireless efforts to recruit him to wherever I was because I knew the transformative impact he would have on our brand, business, culture, and our people. When I made the difficult decision to retire as global CMO at Patron, a brand to this day I remain fiercely protective of, it was a no-brainer to hand the reins to Adrian to shepherd and lead the marketing team, unquestionably raising the bar on the work that we first did together. During his tenure, he led the digital transformation of our analog brand, accelerating our shell growth, and helping to deliver growth across all areas of the marketing funnel, from brand awareness through commercial sales, demonstrating his ability not only to do the cool rubber meets the sky marketing work, but also to deliver concrete value to our shareholders. Adrian has always been provocative, challenging his team, peers, and leadership, championing the consumer in everything he does, and always defending and protecting the brand. He's not always, but generally, the most popular, but he is certainly always respected and does everything with great integrity, transparency, and inclusivity. But perhaps most importantly, Adrian is driven by a bigger sense of faith and purpose, rooted in his family, church, and most recently, using his influence to address issues of social equity and injustice. Despite globetrotting and the craziness that comes with it, his priorities, while stressed, 
are never compromised. And I often looked to Adrian to help balance me when I lost sight of what really mattered. I'm honored to call Adrian my friend and my colleague and look forward to following what will unquestionably be a future full of continued success personally and professionally. Today, I'm feeling pretty smart about first hiring Adrian as a young kid fresh out of college. Once again, congratulations, AP, on a simply perfect recognition. Kane is in the building. Hey, congratulations. I heard you won an award. I am so proud of you. There is no one more deserving, I feel like. But that does not give you a pass on cleaning up after dinner, helping with the kids' bedtime, and taking out the trash. So I'll see you about mm, 6 p.m. Love you. Tell me what do you see? My name is Adrian Parker. Whoa, whoa. You are the overachievers, overachiever. You lead by example. You do it all with style and grace. Congratulations on your award. Man, we are so proud of Adrian Parker. And we're so proud of you. I'm totally not surprised that you're winning this award because you're related to me. Because you are amazing. Shiny, bald head. <laughs> the most amazing humans I know. One word to describe Adrian? Champion. Visionary. Purposeful. Multidimensional. Catalyst. You met selfless. Storytelling. Motivating. He empowers his team to believe in themselves. Make sure everyone gets recognized and is supported. And I've never once seen him put himself first. He has a clear set of values and intent. Really showed me the power of preparation. Adrian really approaches everything with this incredible sense of wonder. He's a teacher. He's an author. He's an activist. What this guy imagines, he can make happen. Because he doesn't approach everything as if it's already figured out. It really is a privilege to work with him. He truly cares. Everything I learned about social media, I learned from my lovely wife. Well, you know what, the Patron, we've always been about experiences. And you know, tequila's better when you're sharing it with someone. For us, it's really about not yeah. turning our backs on the people that have had to close their restaurants and bars. The best friends are the fastest learners. Planning is an always-on process. You're always altering your strategy. So every day, we take insights and data and apply that to the next day. We, gonna blow your own mind. we create moments where you can interact on social media, you have a mobile app, augmented reality to artificial intelligence. Now you can order Patron and get recipes on an Amazon Alexa. We gonna blow your mind. Getting woke is the first step, but now it's time to get to work. And that starts with us as an individual journey. We all have a privilege, right? That we all have a power and don't be ashamed or guilty of it. Use the heck out of it to help someone else. You preach what your passion is. Your sermon isn't what you say, it's what you live. When we ask somebody, hey, how are you doing? We, we mean it, you know, it's not just good. No, tell me, how are your parents? How are your kids? Y'all you know, want to keep that humanity, keep that empathy for, for one another. His faith, his focus are unswerving in achieving the best for him and the people around him. Thank you, Lee, for that generous introduction and for your very real introduction uh, to the world of marketing and advertising. 20 years ago, um, you've been a great mentor and a friend to me uh, for almost two decades. Um, and thank you to Chris Brockett, John Osborne, the OMD team, and the AAF staff for walking me through this process for six months, even though I've tried to talk you out of it at every turn. You've ignored me. Uh, and you've made me a better marketer in just a short period of time. Um, you know, the thing about any kind of award or recognition is that it's often given for individual um, results and to recipients, but it's really never earned for individual effort. And so I accept this induction into the AAF Hall of Achievement for exactly what it is, for me at least. It is really not a recognition of results, but of relationships, of the people, of the ideas, of the genius, of the beauty that's been all around me for over 20 years in this industry that I've had the privilege to work, uh, I've been blessed and fortunate to serve. Uh, if anything, I'm a prism, reflecting the light, refracting the light, 
that's been all around me at Patron, at Intuit, at Kate Spade, at Foot Locker, at Radio Shack. And so I accept this um, induction for exactly what it is on behalf of the Parker crew. Mom and dad, thank you for your servanthood and for your wisdom that have guided our entire family. Um, thank you to Team Patron that makes the best tequila in the world the hardest way possible. Thank you to my Bacardi family who have taught me what it really means to be fearless and have a founder's mentality. Thank you to all the agencies and the teams that have put up with my crazy ideas. And thank you to everyone who has been a part of this crazy process during a pandemic. Thank you for all your efforts. If I could leave anyone with any uh, advice, especially marketers that are coming up, I'd say one thing. If you're gonna get married, marry the most amazing person you know, like I did. To Alicia, you've been a better wife, a friend, a leader, and a confidant than I ever deserved. And I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. To Caleb and Chloe and Chandler, thank you for your patience with your dad as he learns to be better every single day. And I pray that this will serve as a reminder that I do love you and that that crazy I did doesn't mean you're crazy. It means you're called. Don't give up. God bless you. Adrian, you have been the Patron team's point guard, pushing the creative boundaries with innovation and excellence. Bigger, bolder, better is your philosophy. You never shy away from doing what is right, always resolute and sticking to your beliefs. You put your faith into your work and the team around you. And for that, we thank you. So Adrian, we raise a glass to toast you and this accolade. We couldn't be prouder of you. Salud. Salud. Hey everyone, my name is Miguel Buen Camino of Holy City Handcraft. I'm a mixologist and content creator based out of Charleston, South Carolina. And I'm here to congratulate the entire 2020 American Advertising Federation's Hall of Achievements inductees. I'd like to give a special shout out to my buddy, Adrian Parker, the VP of Global Marketing for Patron Tequila for Bacardi Limited. So in honor of our inductees, I would love to create a cocktail for you guys made with Patron Silver and something super easy to make at home. This recipe is called the Jalisco Sour. It's a take on the New York Sour, traditionally made with bourbon and lemon and simple syrup and red wine. So this cocktail recipe is something I specifically made for Patron for their National Margarita Day campaign this year. I think you guys are really gonna enjoy it. Let's go ahead and start making it. Today we're gonna start with two ounces of our Patron Silver. Next, we're gonna use three quarters of an ounce of agave syrup. Next, we're gonna use three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. And now the fun part, we shake. So for this Jalisco Sour, we're gonna be using a rocks glass today and we're gonna be using one crystal clear ice cube. And now we pour over our ice cube. Last step is to float some red wine on top of this and make sure you actually use one that you like drinking. This will make the cocktail even better if you actually like the wine. So I'm gonna use the back of the spoon to slow down the pour for this wine so we get a proper float for this cocktail. And our last step is to garnish with a dehydrated lemon wheel. And if you don't have a lemon wheel on hand, feel free to use a fresh lemon wheel or even a lemon wedge. I like using the dehydrated lemon wheel because it concentrates those aromas. So when you drink the cocktail, you get a big hit of lemon. And there it is, the Jalisco Sour. I wanna congratulate the inductees again for their contributions and impact to the global advertising community. Cheers to y'all.
Hello, my name is David Bradley. On behalf of my colleagues at The Atlantic, our editors, our business side staff, our fact checkers, maybe especially our fact checkers, I want you to know how proud we are of Haley Romer. And this is the part that's fact checked. Of all the really good things the Hall of Fame has ever done, the finest is electing Haley Romer to its ranks. What can I say of Haley? Well, Haley is in that handful of most talented colleagues I've ever had. She's also in that handful of colleagues who brought the Atlantic back after its hundred years in the wilderness. When Haley finishes her career some long time in the future, I don't think it really matters what else she does. I think the finest thing she will have done is what she has done for us, rescuing this treasured magazine. Before I entered publishing, I had a chief of staff who could do just prodigious amounts of work, unending. His name was Pranov, and I gave him an assignment, laid him one day, and uh, he said, got it, and he'd have it to me the next day. And I said, I, I don't understand. How could, how could you possibly do it? When are you going to do this? And he said, well, I'll do it in magic time. And I said, well, what's magic time? And Pranov said, well, magic time, that's the time when people get things done that are impossible to do. It never was clear to me what he meant by magic time, but I now know a second person who operates in magic time. She is magic time itself. She does prodigious amounts of work across the day and then she goes home and she tends a family, and then she does more work, and then she finishes everything. But one day doesn't bleed into the next. She comes at work the next day, regathered with poise. The Italians have an interesting word for exactly this phenomenon of doing vast amounts of work, but shrugging it off as if it were nothing. They call it sprezzatore. We have a word for it as well. We call it grace. Haley, now the whole world knows what we know. And Haley, God bless the day that you first walked through the Atlantic offices. Congratulations. Good night. For as long as I could remember, my big sister has had this incredible ability to connect with people in the most genuine of ways. She has always wanted to hear one's personal story and through that dialogue, create an authentic and long lasting connection. I believe this desire to forge genuine connections started when our mom passed away. Haley was just three years old and I was a baby. From that day forward, Haley was determined to foster a deep connection with me. At a very young age, Haley set out to make a great impact on the world by the work that she does and the way in which she does it. Everyone she works with insists that she has impacted them in many positive ways. Personal note, Haley's become a dear friend. I look to her for advice and her wisdom. Uh, she's a great listener and one of those people you can always count on to do what she says she's gonna do. To know Haley and to work with Haley every day is to know that Haley brings a rare combination of authenticity and passion to everything that she does. Haley's insatiable curiosity, strategic brilliance, and massive creativity helped us create the most incredible branded content. Haley has all of the great qualities of a leader. She's smart, she's courageous, she's adaptable but mostly she's in it for others and that makes her stand out from the rest. Uh, Haley has always taught me the power of having a positive attitude and a sense of humor even in the darkest of times. The amount of adventures that we had, but more importantly laughs um, have been something I've treasured and I'm grateful for. And Haley, I just wanted to have someone else congratulate you. Hi Haley, uh, congratulations on getting into the Hall of Fame. I wish I could say I taught you everything you knew, but it's quite the opposite. I learned a lot from you, and I hope to uh, look forward to the time when our paths will cross soon again. Haley has impacted me professionally in so many ways, but the thing that stands out the most is that she showed me that it's possible to be ambitious, successful, and a great leader, while also being an incredible mom. 
Hayley's utterly committed to her team. And at the same time, I know that Adler and Pierce always comes first and it's really inspiring. We're lucky to have her. My name is Adler and I love my mom because she always taught me to have confidence no matter what. Hi, I'm Pierce Eden. I love my mommy because she takes good care of me and she swims with me. She, she loves me. She snuggles with me, she plays with me, and she gives me showers. And Haley, uh, well, everything we do uh, is made possible by Haley's work. Uh, it's probably not in my best interest to share that information with her, but, but there you go. It's such an incredible honor to be here and especially to be recognized for my work among a jury of my peers. Congratulations to my incredible fellow inductees. To be clear, I too am still wondering how I made it here among this group. But of course, this is not so much about me and instead about the brilliant people I've had the privilege of working with throughout my career. You can be lucky to love what you do and where you do it as I have been, but one rarely says that without the experience of the people whom you work with being first among equal parts to one's success. To all of my Atlantic and former colleagues, my industry colleagues and peers, this recognition is truly representative of all of our work together. And of course, I must thank my family, my husband Adam, my son Adler, my daughter Pierce, and our extended family Heather, because without your unwavering support for and belief in me, none of this would happen. There's simply no world where I'd be here without you. Also, and especially to my sister, who makes me start every single day asking how I can be a better person and do more to make the world a better place, you are the greatest inspiration ever. I did not intentionally work in the world of advertising. I went to school to be a journalist. It was happenstance that my cousin introduced me to this side of the media business. I had no prior knowledge or insight into the strategy that went into developing plans for brands to connect with consumers. And especially as I thought about working in journalism, it had never occurred to me that there's an even larger industry that runs parallel to it, creating a massive ecosystem of storytelling and connection with consumers. And so I naively embarked on this journey, which I can say, was the first journey I had ever truly embarked on innocently, only to realize that actually it was the natural progression of the journey I had always been on. My childhood was a wild mix of all the ups and downs people experience over a lifetime packed into the formative years, all but ensuring I grew up too fast. I came to understand how fragile life is at a way too early age, which created a real need for me to find a way to make how I spend my time and what I do matter to more than just me, it had to mean something. The thing I did not learn early on is that there are no absolutes in meaning. Meaning is derived from the connections we make to the people, places, and things along the way. The most obvious thing to me now is that whenever you look back on something, an evening, an event, a pitch, you do not remember the whole of it. What sticks with you is a singular moment that someone connected in a way that is different from all other moments. I'm reminded of the quote, the best effort of a fine person is felt after we have left their presence. Thinking about how I spend my time at work or outside of work, the connections I make are the ones that drive the meaning and impact. The connections are the things that matter most. I am enormously grateful for the people and ideas I've had the chance to connect with up until this point throughout my career. And every day I keep going in search of that next connection, the next moment or idea that will create new meaning for me and for anyone else. Because I've learned it all has meaning. Every time we engage someone, we have the chance to shape someone's thinking, influence their feelings and their actions. We can take what might otherwise be a simple conversation and turn it into a big idea 
that many people work together on. We can shift the trajectory of our entire careers and our lives based on a simple interaction. And we are all on that journey. I haven't been asked to give advice, but in sharing a little bit about my story, it's clear that there's always an opportunity to create meaning and have an impact with what you do. If you look at every single interaction you have as the actual opportunity to do so. And never forget the best effort of a fine person is felt after we have left their presence. And finally, a very big thank you to the AAF who in just a few short months has underscored the value of this incredible industry and the power of bringing great people together. This experience has truly been the brightest light for me this year, and your presence has been with me ever since we met. Thank you. Haley, it's Andrea. On behalf of your friends at Ally, congratulations on your induction into the Hall of Achievement. It's well deserved and I'm extremely proud of you. You're in rare air now. Welcome to the club, my friend. We are open until 8 p.m. tonight. Oh, oh God. adapt and we change. We're here to keep you safe. As an alumnus of the Advertising Hall of Achievement class of many years ago, I'm really excited to induct my colleague, friend, and partner in creativity, Brandon Pierce, as one of the newest members. I've worked with Brandon for just about a year now, but I knew his work long before I knew the person behind it. From Chew On It for Twizzlers to Schmirnoff's Keep It Moving, and my personal favorite, that's gonna be on SportsCenter. All of these campaigns not only broke through in culture, they also made their way into award show jury rooms where I was a judge. Brandon cut his teeth at some of the industry's most iconic agencies, from Droga to 72 to Wyden, before finding his way to his current home at Hulu, where his impact has been tremendous. Brandon is the driving force behind creative initiatives such as Home is Where the Hulu Is and This Is How You Hulu. He created Your Attention Please, a docuseries that shines a light on a rising generation of black leaders. When the coronavirus hit, Brandon led our team in developing a campaign that struck the right tone at a tough time. Hulu has whatever you're feeling, reminded viewers who needed a laugh, a cry, or a hug that they could find it all on Hulu. Those of us who work with B day in and day out have benefited greatly in getting to know him as a leader and a person, including as a trusted voice in crucial conversations on racial inequality and diversity. I asked a few of my fellow hooligans to offer up a few words to describe Brandon. Bold, they said, magically calm, a superstar. Brandon is as relentlessly kind as he is creative, as he is generous with that creativity. He's known for his positive vibes and his hats, a desire to impact culture, He's also a sneakerhead, a dog whisperer, and according to one of his writers, someone who doesn't get annoyed when I put wolves into scripts. Very important feature. He can seem to be a walking contradiction, equal parts supporting and demanding, calm and passionate, fun and serious. But there's really nothing contradictory about it. It all adds up to a dynamic and creative leader who is just getting started. Congratulations, B. The following work was either written, creative directed, or directed by Brandon Drew Jordan Pierce. Yo. Yo, Brian. They want me to show my work. What should I do? Hey, you know what you gotta do, man. 
My man Brandon been doing things for a minute. Check this shit out. <laughs> We, we call it doing things. Creativity is everything in today's game. It's about making a statement. Bye, hum, bizzle, mother. We call it doing things. Everything I'm living now, I dreamt about it. It's not going to be on your time. It's not going to be on your schedule. You have to be patient. You're not giving up. I can send wives away for you. I do. I want to watch the college football playoff with you. Oh. It is? Oh, so how do you make it? How do you overcome the odds? By being the hardest worker in the room. We call it doing things. My name's LT. I got a little dance for y'all. We call it doing things. Doing things. How do I not invite Kyle to my birthday? Do you want it? You always have to be sweet and smooth. You know, both surprisingly cheap. Wait, what? We call it doing things. Black Mamba. The boss wants to see you. The boss collects the best basketball players in the world. The world's deadliest predator is about to become my town boy. Things, 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 call it doing things, 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 call it, call it doing, doing, doing things. Die in love. So I should it in. Black Mama doesn't end. Heroes come and go, but legends are forever. The work you've just seen was either written, created, directed, or directed by Brandon Drew Jordan Pierce. Thank you. Pusha T once said, CNN said I'd be dead by 21. That lyric has always stayed with me. Reason being, that's literally the case for people that look like me, which is, as you can see, a black male in America. And tonight, you're witnessing an acceptance speech from an endangered species in this country. Call me Brandon Drew Jordan Pierce, the endangered species. And that right there is what has motivated me all of these years. The knowing that is always comfortably seated in my soul. The knowing that I'm not supposed to be here, that I'm the exception in this industry and still not the norm. Now, I don't really talk much about my experiences living in this world as an endangered species. And tonight, I'm not gonna go all the way with it, but I did wanna use this as an opportunity to remind everyone out there that other endangered species like myself are dealing with trying to survive in this country while cracking a creative grief. Being in a boardroom by day, being told nice work while presenting a script, and then being told you're in Georgia now, boy, by night while being harassed by police for walking while black. True story, and yes, walking while black is a whole thing. What we as black men navigate and rarely talk about or burden others with is serious. And endangered species are in fact endangered because quite frankly, they're being hunted. So please, as we use this ceremony to celebrate, let's also use it as an opportunity to educate and get educated on tolerance and the well-being of our fellow man, 
woman, and child. Now, if I don't thank some people tonight, it's going to be super weird. So let's hop to that, shall we? Oh, and by the way, what I just did there is called an abrupt transition. One of my creative techniques that I love to utilize. If you know me, you know I like these little weird segues. So here we go. The people I'm about to name are the reason I'm standing here today and will still be standing here after the night ends. To my mom, Catherine Jordan Pierce, and my late father, Dr. H. Bruce Pierce, thank you for always reminding me life is not a dress rehearsal. We even had a pillow on our couch with that mantra on it. I still live by that code today. To all the folks at UNC Chapel Hill and the Creative Circus, Dan, Norm, Hetty, Carol, thank you for planting the seed that I can make a career rocking Air Jordans and just a laptop in hand. To Gary Goldsmith for being my second boss. Shout out to Joanne Keegan at a little agency in Durham, North Carolina for being my first boss. To all of my partners along the way, Adolfo, Mike Schott, Chena, to Clarence Bradley for being my example of a black man as a copywriter on Madison Avenue. To Jimmy Smith for being the plug. To Melanie Myers, Susan Hoffman, Byron Oshiro, WK12, Wisnan, Williams, Alberta. Wyden changed my whole perspective on creativity. To Dan Wyden, who told me he still didn't know what the fuck he was doing when I naively asked him what his process was. And to all the other agencies I was able to create work that I'm super proud of at, Sid Lee, 72 and Sunny, and Droga 5. To Pedro and Ruben for helping me with that little pitch deck. To all the folks who took time to write letters of recommendation when I know you have a thousand other things going on. Kyle, Ian, Mike Shot, Kelly, Kelsey, Laura, Alberto, and James. Thank you. And finally, thank you to Hulu for giving me belief in myself outside of agency life and giving me the platform to flex and challenge my abilities. Thank you, Kelly Campbell. Thank you, Scott Donatan. And lastly, I want to thank my future wife, Sarah. I love you so much. And thank God every day that we found each other and like we like to say, are now doing life together. Thank you, AAF, for this amazing honor. And to all my fellow inductees this year and years past, congratulations. I would say let's party, but again, 2020. And then special shout out to Winston and Dodger. I'm coming home with the championship, guys. Actually, I'm just going to come downstairs and give you guys treats after this because recording a speech virtually is super frustrating but fun at the same time in very, very 2020. Peace, y'all. Stay safe. I really don't remember not being able to braid. <laughs> he used to braid my brother's hair, my sister's hair, neighbor's hair. When everything shut down, I thought, you know what? People have been asking for online classes for the longest. It was amazing. Business kept growing and growing and growing. But I feel blessed that I can still connect with others, support others, and I am still going. Hello, I am Tiffany R. Warren, and I'm the Executive Vice President, Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer for Sony Music Group. I am deeply honored today to have the role, and I accept the role very lovingly, to induct Mr. Cavell Khan into the AAF Hall of Achievement. And it is my honor to induct Cavell into the hall because Cavell is a great friend of mine, but not only a great friend, he's a hero of mine, and he's an important colleague to so many people in so many companies across this industry. Cavell is the CRO of Tumblr, and in that role, he is responsible for revenue and partnerships both things that Cavell knows really, really well, and he actually does really, really well. But throughout his years in the advertising industry, Cavell knows how important a role of great leadership has played, not only in his um, ascension, but also in supporting and mentoring those that are, are, are coming up behind him. 
And so today I want to just talk a little bit about Cavell, um, and I know he'll do the rest. Um, but in getting to know him, I really was struck first by his calmness, and then by the way that he leads from wherever he is. He's not called or asked to lead, he just does. And so the pride and joy of St. Elizabeth, Jamaica, <laughs> and one of four siblings, he's the middle child, um, to his mom, Yvette Austin Kahn, and his dad, Errol Kahn. I think Cavell has always had that star of leadership um, in his heart. And so he often was the only person of color in the rooms that he entered, but he used this as a motivation to lead not only himself, but others and break barriers at the same time. He's often prioritized recruiting diverse talent in the companies that he's worked for, like Microsoft, and certainly Twitter, where he co-led the Blackbirds Employee Resource Group, which helped, honestly, the social media company recruit and retain diverse candidates. Cavell's leadership goes well beyond his workplace or his workplaces. He is the former co-chair of the Ad Color Advisory Board, and that's where I've gotten to know him the most, where he championed the work of diverse people. But in doing so, he was also a great mentor to young people coming up in the industry. And a true sign of his work with the advisory board is that it continues to model and host some of the leadership techniques that Cavell employed while he was the co-chair. He also is on the IAB Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Council. But not only that, he's on the board of trustees for Community Roots um, Charter School, which is a Brooklyn-based school, focused on having more inclusive and diverse classrooms, which we all know leads to more inclusive and diverse um, corporations. In addition, and I know he loves this part, he speaks at high schools and middle schools, educating and driving awareness about careers in advertising um, to students at an early age. His guiding star, he will tell you, is his family, who I mentioned earlier. But the bigger guiding star is his own family that he's built with his beautiful wife, Dr. Christina hunter Khan, and his amazing son, Kaylin, who's 10 years old, and the newest member of the Khan family, Christopher Khan, who's six months old. I met Cavell in 2012 at Ad Color, um, and I knew immediately that he would be in my circle from the point of even the conversations we had then and his ideas about leadership within Ad Color were much admired um, and, and much hoped for. Um, so today is his day. I'm so proud of him and I'm so humble that he asked me um, to pr provide this intro for his induction into the Hall of Achievement. Cavell, you are so loved. Thank you so much for all you've done for so many people. Two to three minutes can't contain how much we appreciate all that you've done for the industry. Congratulations um, and welcome. Welcome to the Hall. Cavell is really a first-class leader. He brings such a fantastic mix of dedication, ambition, humility, strategy, uh, hard work. And when I say hard work, he leads by example. Now I'm going to break this down in a way you've never heard. So listen closely about a brother you all know. The dopest cat with a fly in the head, no debate, find his head, do. I'm going to tell you things he would have never told you. Count your lucky stars you have me here. I'm gonna spit truth, but you hear it from me. Cavell, we are so excited that you are being inducted into the Advertising Hall of Achievement. Your grit, undeniable talent, and character are what brought you here today. These are also qualities that make you an amazing husband and a super dad. The boys and I are so excited that you are being recognized for all that you do in the industry and in our community. Cavell is one of those cats you only hear about or read about, or seeing a movie or a TV show where you're watching the screen and you're thinking, people ain't like that. Cavell is that rare gem, that special being, that dude. Even in our business engagements, you've been so incredibly thoughtful. And as a friend, you are the true embodiment of that old adage, rising tide lifts all the boats. I can't say it all, but his dedication to diversity is unmatched. The things he's done to include everyone is amazing. I'm so grateful 
and happy for you to, you know, have your work acknowledged. Definitely need more of this in 2020. If you are fortunate enough to ever cross paths with him, you will notice that he is not only a person who leads with empathy and compassion, but his dedication to diversity and inclusion is truly unmatched. If that were it, that'd still be cool. For Microsoft to Twitter, he's often the only person of color, using that to motivate and lead to break barriers like no other, and he isn't even done. Over the years, Cabell has told me, oh, why not aspire to make a difference in this world? Cabell, I have one for you. Why not? be part of the Advertising Hall of Achievement. He always gives props to the ones that open the door for him and major big ups to his family. His parents were more than a rock. Man, I can't say enough, but I do have a time limit. Even though his list of achievements are long and wide, I'm talking long like a football field and wide as east to west, that ain't even the greatest thing about this dude. I've been lucky enough to work with you over many, many years and at many companies and learned a lot from you. And I've really learned how to be a better leader by working with you, and I will always appreciate that. He's the nicest, kindest, most humblest guy on the face of the earth. And for what it's worth, he wouldn't want me to tell you this. So shh, get in there for me. I know that myself and many others in this industry who look like you uh, wouldn't be where we are if not for your inspiration, if not for your encouragement. So thank you, my brother. I have gotten to know Cavell well over the last seven years. I clearly understand the depth of his commitment to making a better, more diverse world for all of us. Congratulations, Congratulations Cavell. Wow, my deep gratitude to the American Advertising Federation and to the Council of Judges for this recognition. A huge congrats to my fellow inductees. I'm so proud to be sharing this moment with such good people. There are an army of angels in this industry who have done so much for me. I wish I had time to thank every single person. My deepest gratitude to anyone who has opened doors, mentored, allowed me the privilege of being their manager, coached me through failure, and given me friendship. Thank you to my colleagues at Microsoft, Twitter, Vice Media Group, and Tumblr. And of course, to my agency partners and clients, I would not be here without the trusted partnership you've given me over the years. How many of you would have taken a chance on a young black man with dreadlocks whose prior work experience was being a factory worker, being a security guard, and a failed entrepreneur? That takes trust and bravery in seeing something in someone that they don't see in themselves. It's that kind of trust and bravery that we need now in leadership to solve so many of our industry's problems. So whether you're a CEO or a high school student watching this, I encourage you, make those bold decisions. They will change our industry, our culture, and even a life for the better. To my wife, and to my two sons, you are my everything. Since I met my wife five years ago, my career has been like a hockey stick. Keep that good luck coming, babe. I love you. My parents gave up everything when they were around my age to start over in America. My dad went from being a small business owner to being a factory worker. My mom, went from being a vice principal to being a nurse who takes care of the severely disabled. What they did is truly what deserves to be in the hall of achievements. Anything that is seen in me that makes me deserving of this award comes from them. This is your award, Yvette and Arrow. I look forward to continuing this journey with so many of you to make this industry a better place. Thank you so much. I used to wonder if I ever could be loved. Never gonna live up, 
Should I give up? Will I ever be enough? What I didn't understand is you love me as I am. Nah. I don't care what anybody thinks about me. You're the only one that I No, I don't care what anybody thinks about me. It is my sincere pleasure to introduce Jared Dicker to the AAS 2020 Hall of Achievement. Jared represents a really interesting constituency in our industry, and that's around media product. We've all learned how powerful products are, media products are, to build brands, to support journalism and media businesses, and to shape culture. Uh, and Jared's been at the forefront of leading innovation in the field of media product. He, he fell into the, his professional passion, as many of us have. He started his career as a rock journalist and then ultimately uh, went to work on the monetization and business side at Huffington Post, where he led an innovation group that invented native advertising. Um, and after running product at Time Inc., he was part of Jeff Bezos's infusion of technologists into the Washington Post, um, where again, he started working on cutting edge monetization products that ultimately made the Washington Post profitable. Um, and while they weren't just looking at their own business, Jay was also part of the team that launched Zeus, which is a SaaS platform that the Washington Post licenses to over a hundred local news organizations to run their monetization stack so they can stay focused on their core mission of journalism. And he's not stopping there. He's working on a lot of great stuff around improving ad load, uh, uh, working with ad blockers, uh, navigating the cookie list future, lots of great stuff to find a way to meet the needs of the advertiser and the user and, 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 and bring it all together in a great way to make advertising better. Outside of uh, his professional life, He's involved with Techstars as a mentor. He's on the board of the Rutgers School of Innovation. Uh, he's involved with uh, animal support groups. Uh, Jared and his wife have a really active household with twin three-year-old boys, as well as three rescue dogs. Uh, and I know that house is always jumping. I hope it's really jumping tonight to celebrate Jared's induction into the Hall of Achievement. Jared, congratulations. Hey, is this MTV Cribs? Welcome to my home, y'all. What's your name? I'm Jared Dicker. Coffee or tea? Coffee. What's for dinner tonight? Pizza. Who do you live with? I live with Chelsea, my wife, and Knox and Nash, my twin sons. Hey guys, what does daddy do for a living? Toys. So what do you do? He works for the Washington Post. Google his name. He's all over the internet. Yeah. My dad has no idea what I do. I'm thinking maybe he's the paper boy. My mom has no idea what I do. <laughs> is a visionary. He is in charge of all those things. Going around town, throwing the papers onto the front porch. That is what makes him a rock star. He does that. He does that? He does that. That's what he does? I think. And Winston agrees. Right, Winston? Let me know if that's what he does. He's a big deal. He's a big, he's a big deal. Give me a call. Let me know. I am the vice president of commercial technology at the Washington Post. 
I accidentally fell into advertising. Uh, I was a journalist and wanted to be a career journalist. My proudest accomplishment uh, has been the work that I do at the Washington Post. There's two um, big achievements. One was RED, the Research Experimentation and Development Group that I founded in 2016. The second was Zeus Technology, which we launched about a year and a half ago. So being a part of this and getting this award has really been a true testament to being able to engage and be a part of such a tremendous community that is writing the blueprint for the future of this industry. What song best represents me? Uh, Free by the band Fish. Cheers. How do I celebrate? I actually buy guitars. So uh, you could kind of see my trophy case, um, you know, kind of in the room that we're sitting in. When we found out uh, that I was inducted into the Advertising Hall of Achievement, we were at my parents' house and I stepped out to the music shop that I went to when I was a little kid and came home with a guitar, which to Chelsea Shock was um, kind of like, do you need 12 of these? But um, again, uh, now, now kind of it triggers this amazing memory and I love to have something physical to look at. Oh, here we go. To the American Advertising Federation, its incredible board, its members, and my 2020 fellow rock star inductees, thank you. I'm so proud to be celebrating here with all of you tonight. I use the word proud intentionally because this is truly a source of pride. Going through the process and seeing and hearing the stories of nominees past and present is a humbling experience. You can't help but feel imposter syndrome as you look around to see what others in this industry have accomplished. As someone who's engineered a lot of ad tech in their career, I can confidently say that contextual targeting works and I'm lucky to be amongst this bunch. To my wife and my sons, thank you. We've truly tested our love for one another over the past eight months during COVID, and I guarantee we're gonna make it. This is a house built on love and support and I wouldn't want it any other way. All thanks to my wife, Chelsea. You're the world to me and the author of this incredible life that we live together. We also get to work in the same industry, you at Facebook, me at the Washington Post, even though headlines often make conversations at home pretty hard. I love you very much and really thank you for everything you do for us. To my parents, my sister, my in-laws, from mother, father, sister to brother, thank you. And of course, to my colleagues and mentors, past and present and inevitably future, I would not be here without all of your lessons, friendship and collaboration. In this brief moment, I really want to focus on just a single thing. The reason I work in advertising is because I believe in its importance to power something near and dear to my heart, journalism. And with brand safety and other, and, and other mechanisms now coming about, this relationship is now becoming somewhat fractured. As news organizations evolve to these new challenges in response to this, unfortunately, it's a pivot away from things like advertising towards other businesses like subscriptions. And I say unfortunately, because news is important and good information should be accessible to everyone, not just a select few. The more that good information is expensive and bad information is cheap, the less accessible it is for everyone. This is where I really see advertising's next responsibility, innovating a way towards building a better environment and a better society for all. Advertising equals access. And the advertising publisher relationship can now evolve beyond just banners and focus on a service that brings consumers together, the ability for people to get the information that they need. I really look forward to working with all of you to really figure that out. And thank you all for taking the time to listen to my speech today. I look forward to toasting you all in person real soon. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the night. That concludes the 2020 AAF Advertising Hall of Achievement Ceremonies. On behalf of the AAF Board of Directors, I want to thank all of our generous sponsors, our supporters, and the participants who made this new type of award show come together without a hitch. 
Another huge round of congratulations to all of our honorees who took all of the changes to our 2020 program right in stride. And I also want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in and watching and helping us celebrate some of the most innovative and passionate members of this great industry. I hope you are as inspired and motivated as I was after seeing these great and accomplished people and hearing their stories and their own voices. I've spent a lifetime working in advertising and all along my journey, I've never felt more fortunate to be a part of the creative and curious community for so many reasons. And I feel especially fortunate right this moment because I'm surrounded by these creative minds who never let their enthusiasm falter for this new Hall of Achievement format. If there's anyone that can adapt and make it look good, it's those of us in this industry who have been doing just that throughout our careers. So I guess the key word for 2020 is adaptability. And the AF is doing our best to continue to adapt with our annual programming and making sure to do so safely. We hope to see you all in person for the 2021 AAF Hall of Achievement Ceremonies. Go ahead and mark your calendars now, November 17th next year at Cipriani 42nd Street in New York City. We'll all be together again. And as always, the AF is incredibly proud to serve you as the unifying voice for advertising. We have much work to do yet, and we'd love to have your support as we get right back to it. Thanks again. Take care, stay safe, and be kind.